Riverside Plaza was the first and only development completed of an ambitious eight-part urban renewal plan to turn the blighted West Bank neighborhood of Cedar Riverside into a new town-in-town -town utopia. Minneapolis was selected for the Federal Housing Authority's Model City Program, and a group of faculty members at the University of Minnesota spearheaded the project at Cedar Riverside Associates, securing a substantial amount of funding. Not only did they have interest in redeveloping the land, but also recognized that the university could benefit from expanding over the river. Just a half mile down the river from St. Anthony's Falls, cut out by Highway 35W and Highway 94, Cedar Riverside was home to immigrant families who had worked in the thriving milling industry. Due to the neighborhood's ethnic background and proximity to the university, it was an easy target for urban renewal. The proposed development was to span 300 acres or 0.47 square miles and provide multiple self-sustaining communities to alleviate growing housing problems and public perceptions of blight. A blighted area costs their city more money than it makes them in taxes. These areas have low average incomes, low property value, lack of facilities, high crime rates, and accounted for a disproportionate amount of fire calls due to outdated electrical systems and fire-prone building materials. This was a result of systematic racism where people didn't have equal access to education, financing, career opportunities, and much more. As World War II came to an end, returning soldiers looking to move into houses added pressure to develop underperforming neighborhoods and cities. Founded in 1851, before Minnesota was a state, the University of Minnesota played a large role in the status of the city. It attracted intelligent people from across the country and is the birthplace of the Mayo Clinic, one of the top hospitals in the United States. With the university lying directly in the city, they felt the growing pains of cities across the country. Space was an issue and growth wasn't slowing down. In 1965, the Washington Bridge was built connecting the east bank of the Mississippi to the west bank of the Mississippi, paving the way for the university's expansion into Cedar Riverside. The bridge was unique in its design and accommodated pedestrians on the top floor and cars on the bottom floor. The bridge would make it easy for students to commute to the new campus and allow the university to expand. The only problem was the West Bank was still considered a dangerous and blighted area. Cedar Riverside Associates consisted of three people, University of Minnesota business faculty member Keith Heller, University of Minnesota Medical School professor Martin Segal, and his wife Gloria Segal. They secured over $24 million in government funding to complete the first stage of their ambitious project. Gloria Segal acted as the public face of the association. Not only was the project proposed by University of Minnesota faculty members, but also designed by the director of the School of Architecture, Ralph Rapson. The brutalist design features multicolored window shades, unfinished protruding metal bars, and exposed concrete. The Demonstration Cities and Metropolitan Act was a 10-page document passed in 1966, and Minneapolis was chosen as one out of the 63 cities across the U.S. to receive federal funding for public housing projects. Cedar Riverside Associates secured a whopping $24 million in funding for the first stage of their project. The plan included new walkways, pedestrian bridges, a central plaza, repaving roads, planting trees, community centers, K-8 charter schools, computer education labs, and education programs. The community was supposed to be self-sufficient, meaning that residents shouldn't have to leave the community to get goods or services that they need in everyday life. The goal of this self-sustaining model was to reduce traffic congestion in surrounding areas, allow for more people to live closer together in less space, and build strong, integrated, growing communities. Not everyone was as enthusiastic about the new model. Concerned parents cited evidence of high-rise buildings having a negative impact on early childhood development. Others were concerned about the lack of open space and air quality. With the project area spanning a half mile, a handful of local businesses and countless residential homes were going to be bought up and destroyed. Due to Cedar Riverside's proximity to the university and the construction of the Washington Bridge, throughout the years, students have become integrated into the area and brought their own culture to it. The area was a hotspot for drinking, drugs, and hippie culture. Falling inside the city's liquor patrol limits, there are many loved student dive bars. The Electric Fetus opened in 1968 and was a perfect example of how culturally diverse Cedar Riverside had become. The record store was known for selling unique and unheard of records by up-and-coming bands. The abrasive name for the store signified and strengthened the strong counterculture created by students and neighborhood residents. Unique places like this gave Cedar Riverside an identity that residents and visitors believed was worth preserving. 
College campuses are known for progressive social movements. During the construction of the Riverside Plaza, anti-war protests reached a boiling point. On May 9, 1972, more than 250 students and faculty members staged a walkout in wake of the news that the U.S. would supply weapons to North Vietnam. Shortly after, the Federal Housing Authority spoke about urban redevelopment and the Cedar Riverside Project. Many protesters from the anti-war protests earlier joined in and a group of 500 descended on the event. The protest was dispersed after police charged into the crowd after being hit with eggs. 17 were arrested and the National Guard was on standby. In 1972, a coalition of opponents called the Cedar Riverside Environmental Defense Fund threatened to file an environmental suit over the lack of citizen participation. The original environmental impact statement the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development submitted was lackluster and outdated. The suit was upheld in court and HUD was ordered to write a new statement and get it approved before they continue construction on the first stage of the redevelopment plan. Legal proceedings plagued the Cedar Riverside Associates for years and stalled progress in their plans. Ultimately, the kickback from the community was too costly and the other seven parts of the development plan were abandoned. Stage one of the Cedar Riverside redevelopment plan opened in 1973 under the name Riverside Plaza and was one of the first large-scale urban renewal projects to be completed in Minneapolis. The plaza consists of six buildings and 1,300 residential units, with 669 of them being subsidized housing. Each building is a different height and sports the same brutalist design with exposed steel and rough materials. The smaller part of a larger-scale project was successful for what it was. Residents moved into the buildings, and the plaza created more space for them and other city-goers. From 1973 to 1977, six new restaurants opened in the area, and the neighborhood continued to be a center for music, drinking, and counterculture. Since 2010, the dubbed Crack Stacks boasted a 90% occupancy rate and is now listed as a historic building. The University of Minnesota has now expanded further into the city and across the river. With 36,000 undergraduate students, the university continues to be a driver of growth and have a heavy influence on the surrounding area. The population of Cedar Riverside is now home to 8,094 people. The area continues to grow and is a center for diversity. Dilla's Ethiopian restaurant offers authentic and delicious food with vegetarian options, and the Hole in the Wall Mediterranean Deli will provide inexpensive lunches. Down the street, Acadia Cafe is a hotspot for activists and students. The urban landscape has changed, but the long-standing traditions and characteristics of Cedar Riverside have outlasted the renewal. The community is still working to improve conditions and are active in local politics.